Welcome to Thoughts on the Market. I'm Michael Zizas, Head of Public Policy Research and Municipal Strategy for Morgan Stanley. Along with my colleagues bringing you a variety of perspectives, I'll be talking about the intersection between U.S. public policy and financial markets. It's Wednesday, April 1st at 11 a.m. Eastern. There's not many headlines that can shock New Yorkers these days, but one that may have is a statement from the MTA, which runs the city subway system. They say they need federal aid to avoid defaulting on its bonds. With ridership down 90% as people follow social distancing guidelines, the MTA estimates it's losing about $125 million a week. It reminds us that investors need to look to the $2 trillion stimulus bill, which became law last Friday, for cues about the fundamental health of the muni bond market. The bill includes around $400 billion for municipal governments and nonprofits. And this makes sense because this group has, in many ways, been at the forefront of responding to COVID-19 and draining their financial resources to do so. But is $400 billion enough to preserve their financial health? It's a key question for municipal bond investors, and the answer varies depending on the sector. The money is least likely to be sufficient in the state and local government sector. $150 billion of direct aid sounds like a lot, but after you break down how it's distributed, many states are only getting between 2 and 5% of their normal revenues. With an economy expected to shrink 30% this quarter, that's likely not a big enough amount of aid to avoid states having to, over time, cut spending on essential services, increase taxes, or possibly both to avoid downward pressure on their credit ratings. For hospitals, the money is more generous at about 10% of annual revenue, but the law doesn't specify exactly how it will be spent. In our view, large hospital systems tend to have enough cash on hand and geographical diversity to weather COVID-19, but the smaller, single-facility hospitals are more vulnerable to burning through cash quickly if an outbreak occurs in their area. So investors in the sector should be watching to see if the government targets this money to smaller hospitals before they run short of cash. For airports, the money is good news. Even with air travel at a near standstill, you may be surprised to learn that the top 30 airports in the U.S. are in relatively good financial shape. Many came into this environment with well over a year's cash on hand. The $10 billion being distributed amongst U.S. airports only boosts this cash buffer. Of course, these reserves will be spent down over time, and ratings downgrades may follow, but they also buy a lot of time for air travel to normalize before bondholders face serious default risks. Said differently, muni investors can feel good that airports have plenty of runway. Thanks for listening. For more video from Morgan Stanley, please subscribe here to our YouTube channel, or you can subscribe to Thoughts on the Market directly on Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast platform. The preceding content is informational only and based on information available when created. It is not an offer or a solicitation, nor is it tax or legal advice. It does not consider your financial circumstances and objectives and may not be suitable for you.